Playing trap decks require a lot of skill. I don't care what anyone says. Flip up your floodgate, do nothing for nine turns. It takes a lot of skill to do that. What if you go too much to the left when you lift up your card or too much to the right? It takes a lot of skill. So I enlisted the, my boy Pack to help us here to tell us the exact way to lift up your trap card and then do nothing for nine turns. Because now Multifaker is at three and Altergeist is a legitimate threat. So if you think my Altergeist is not a threat, you're probably right. But now Multifaker at three, Three multi-faker, baby. Three multi-faker means three wins in a whole tournament because you're probably going three and seven with this deck. But nonetheless, let's go to the greatest Altergeist deck profile y'all ever seen with my boy Pac. Gonna be showcasing a whole new combo. So if you're the video, smash the subscribe button. Get a beautiful Servant of Endymion playmat because that's probably, like, if you play a trap deck, you're probably into this weep shit. So, you know, go buy it. And let's get straight into the video, baby. But greatest Altergeist deck profile of all time. Greatest Altergeist deck profile of all time. Let's go. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome today to um, another combo tutorial video involving Altergeist, right? Like a deck that... It's kind of weird to put like combo and ultra in the same sentence, but they do have some really cool plays that you can do with Haunted Rock and Link Cross actually with the advent of like Eternity Code. There are actually like ways to actually, um, you know, make um, plays. But anyways, um, we're going to start off with uh, Marinette. So this this two card combo is basically Marinette plus any uh, ultra case monster. So you have uh, Marinette. Uh, Marinette is going to set Haunted Rock. Um, Haunted Rock is gonna, um, the turn it's set, you can actually use it right away. And the first effect of Haunted Rock, which is mandatory, is you dump an Altergeist monster from your hand to the graveyard. Uh, then you would use Marinetta's effect to, uh, target the Haunted Rock and the Silk to, like, essentially swap them. Um, you would link these two off into Hexia. And then Silk, when it's sent to the graveyard, would float and add you back Haunted Rock. If you, had, if you have Marinette and Melody Seek, you would then get a search off Melody Seek. But here, because we drew Silk and Marinette, we actually get Haunted Rock back to our hand. Uh, then you would just use uh, Hexia and then turn that into um, Link Cross. And then we'll just Chain Block. So we'll go Chain Link 1, Hexia, Chain Link 2, Link Cross. Uh, the tokens are really, really nice because if they'll serve as free Link material for the following turn. And like so if the opponent doesn't get rid of them, then it's just like free Link material for you. Uh, they just can't be used as Link material the turn they're summoned. But anyways, Hexia would then trigger, and then Hexia would add you Faker. I mean, this is two cards, so it assumes you open up at least one trap, which you should have no problem opening. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, and then if you open up like another Altergeist, like three Altergeist monsters, then Haunted Rock becomes a spell tra uh, trap negate. So that's like decent, but um, that's like pretty much like uh, the first piece of the, the combo. Alright guys, so now this is like part 2 of the combo. This involves Multifaker and Marinette in the same opening hand, which isn't as unlikely anymore because Multifaker is now at 3. So the way you would do it is you would go Normal Summon Marinette, use the effect to set Haunted Rock. As you, you'll you notice that all these combos involve Haunted Rock. It's just a way, it's a searchable way to facilitate turn 1 Multifaker. That's like the reason why. You would use um, essentially Marinette now, I'm sorry, Haunted Rock now to dump the Multifaker to the graveyard. It is mandatory to activate. Um, that's fine that it leaves your hand because you're going to use Marinette effect to target the Haunted Rock and the Multifaker. Um, Multifaker would then trigger summoning a um, Alternate Monster from your deck. Uh, in this case, I always summon the Melody because I like searching a follow-up. Uh, so you're going to link these two off into Hexia now. And then of course, Melody would trigger. So the option here is to either add Multifaker again or add uh, Marinette. If you want more explosive power, I would actually add the Multifaker. Um, you would then link um, Marinette and Hexia into um, another Hexia. And then that Hexia, because it was linked off, actually gets you another search. So here you can actually search. You have two options, either Manifestation or Protocol. So I'm going to explain to you the different lines of play that you that are involved with Manifestation versus Protocol. So with Manifestation, um, you do this play if you open up Monster Negates or open up like multiple hand traps and you want more spell trap negates. So essentially... If you decide to choose Manifestation as your target for Hexia, on your opponent's turn, you would use man uh, Manifestation to summon back to Hexia, and then trigger Faker to summon Faker, and then Faker would trigger um, to summon like a Silk. So the, the important thing to know about this line of play is that you want to be able to play around Kaijus. I don't, I, I don't know. I guess that's a thing now. So the way you would play around it is you would actually do this. You would actually activate Manifestation to reborn the Hexia over here, and then trigger Faker to summon... Um, well, under the first Hexia and then 
summon the Faker target over the, the second Hexia. And this is how you play around uh, Kaijus. Uh, so that's just like something to like keep in mind. Um, or like just like like forms of disruption. But this is essentially like the line of play that uh, that um, that I would do if if you had opened up uh, Marinetter and Multifaker. Um, but if you went for the protocol route, so this is what you would have. You wouldn't. This would be in your graveyard, um, and then this would be in your deck. So you would just have protocol Hexia. You would activate protocol, summon uh, Multifaker. You have the multiple options. You can summon the Faker um, uh, here, and then just trigger Silk right here and so there are there there it is so there you have hexia pointing to multifaker and then you have silk right here um so you have like a bounce a monster negate and a spell trap negate so pretty much like um a really nice triangle here so um that's pretty much it for the second combo all right guys we're back with uh, combo part number three uh this involves marinetter multifaker and any blank uh, alterius monster um so you would do the kind of like the same thing so you would go normal summon marinetter um, effect to set the Haunted Rock. Uh, this time, because you open up a blank Altergeist monster, you can actually use Haunted Rock to dump the um, the Silk and then trigger Faker this way instead of dumping Faker. And this plays around like, I guess, DD Crow, so it's like kind of decent. Uh, then you summon the Melly Seek off of Faker, link these two off to get Hexia. Uh, the Melly Seek would actually search you a card. Uh, in this case, I usually like to search the another Faker because it's possible now, so why not? But uh, you can actually just make the, uh, the argument to search Marinetta as well. Um, because you're going to make Prime Banshee in this combo. And then Prime Banshee will just add you back. Um, will just add you back the multi-faker anyways. So this is like how you want to kind of play it. But in this case, like, we'll add like let's say the, the, uh, the multi-faker. You use uh, Marinetta's effect to send the Haunted Rock to the graveyard. To special summon back the Silk. You would then use um, Hexia and the Silk. Into a Prime Banshee. Uh, you would chain block, so you'd go chain link one Hexia, chain link two Silk to add back Haunted Rock to your hand, and then Hexia would search you. In this case, uh, it's like I said, either Manifestation or Protocol, really up to you. Uh, just depends on like what line of plays you want to do. Uh, and then you have Marinetta and Prime Banshee into another Hexia, and then Prime Banshee when it's linked off adds you back the Multivaker to your hand. And so this is what I meant. So like, um, you could have just like instead of searching the Multivaker off the first Melody Seek. You could have easily just added uh, the Marinetta or added Conquery, depending on how you want to play. But like that's that's why this deck is very versatile, and it's just like it's just like I, I know most like if you're like a you know like playing been playing Altergeist for a while you might know this, but for those of you guys who are new to the the channel and like newer to like Altergeist, uh, these are just like some ways you can combo off with Multifaker like turn one. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, and now we're getting to like the deck profile. Guys, we're back with uh, the deck profile, and uh, we'll get right into it, man. So this list is kind of set up kind of weird, but uh, it will make more sense when I get into the explanation. I also want to keep this in mind, guys. Um, this Geist list is still experimental. I'm still working on creating, I think, like the best Geist list. But I mean, I think this list is getting us there, and it's getting a lot closer. But um, I don't want to say this is like the end-all, be-all of like the Geist list at all. So definitely comment below in the comment section like your thoughts on like what you would change like any text that I should consider because I want this deck to um, be a community effort to make guys the best deck ever because um, I don't believe like I'm the best player ever and so I, I believe that if I can get your input and what you guys have to say um, that'll be really like like helpful and like just super awesome um, and as you guys know I stream on Twitch um, so it's uh, which is at twitch.tv slash pack underscore official underscore TCG and that's like the chat box that you see to like to the side and um, they're essentially like it's really helpful if you if you want to like interact with me and like give me tips and see me go live and play live then definitely come check that out as well but anyways without further ado we'll get right into the the deck profile so we have like the one of Kunkuri. uh Kunkuri is like just really really strong um i mean like there's not much to say about this like this is like pretty standard um like Kunkuri is just like insane uh, just the negation attack and being on a loop is just so crazy marinetter melu seek uh and then of course multifigure is now at three so you want to play multifigure at three because um this card is just so insane. Like, resolving Torrential Multifaker is like game against almost every deck. You go plus five. Like, Torrential goes like plus like four sometimes. And then Multifaker resolving just makes it you go plus six. It's just like stupid. Um, anyways, you would then have like the one of Silk. So, this is the change I made ever since Multifaker went to three. You just don't want to draw Silk. Like, this card is terrible. It's, it's like not, it's not terrible. It's an amazing card, but it's really bricky, man. Like, you want it, you want it to cut down to this card. And play more other cards and more hand traps this format because 
Hand traps are really important in this format in order for guys to go second. And you're not going to win all your dice rolls. Like, you guys saw me when I was playing in, you know, uh, in, in Orlando. Like, you have to, like, play ways to be able to go second. Because guys in trap decks in general have a very hard time going second, man. So, um, that's, like, kind of, like, the logic. Uh, then you play triple extravagance and double duality. Like, I think this is pretty standard. But a lot of people are opting to cut duality from their deck list. And I think duality is insane. It makes, it makes it so you see your side deck. But it also gets you access to whatever you need, monster or trap. And um, with Multifigure 3, it makes the deck like 90% consistent. Like, it's insane. Like, with, with Triple Multifigure, Marinetta, Nelly Seek, Spoofing, you have 9 uh, figures in the deck. And then Duality makes it so that the ceiling and the chances of you getting access to that faker and to your traps, hand traps, whatever you need, is so much higher. So that's why it's really, really insane. Uh, in terms of the hand trap lineups, you have 3 Ash, 3 Ogre, 2 Valor, 3 Imperm. So I think most of this is standard. And then the only thing you're probably wondering is like Ghost Ogre. Shout out to Ryan Yu for this. He's the one who like theorized this, this version of the deck with me. So my logic on like Ghost Ogre is that like Ghost Ogre is really, really strong this format because a lot of people are going to be playing Altergeist now. And Ogre just destroys Altergeist, right? Because if they use spoofing, if it's not like on activation... If it so, let me make that very clear. You cannot ogre spoofing on activation. You can only ogre spoofing if it's already face up, and they declare using the spoofing effect. So just making that very clear, guys, because a lot of people misplay with that and they revealed gold ogre for no reason. Um, it all like it, and it's the same interaction with protocol, um, or any continuous traps. But anyways, ogre also outs noodle fiber, and it makes it so that they don't get to draw one from the link cross play. Um, so that's why ogre is really really nice. Um. It also makes it so that, let's say, if they do a ward on effect, they just get three tokens, and they're just left with three tokens. Um, so, it, I think, like, Ghost Ogre is really, really strong, um, this format. Um, and I think it's definitely super underrated. You might see that I'm not playing the Beer Rins because, like, you, it conflicts really badly with Faker. If you summon Faker that turn at all, you cannot summon no, uh, Nibiru. If you activate Nibiru at all, you cannot summon Faker. So, the chances of you having dead cards in your hand increases so much because... Multifigure is now at 3, so the chance of you drawing Faker Nibiru is really, really high. Um, so that's, like, the main reason, um, like, why. So anyways, uh, Imperm is FTK. Like, this card is just crazy. Not much to say. Then you play 1 Manifestation, 2 Protocol. So, like, the logic behind, like, this ratio is because um, Manifestation helps in the grind game. Protocol ensures that you, like, kind of, like, stay in the early game. And you need Protocol, like, really, really badly because... Uh, protocol outs like a lot of like noodle fiber and outs like the rock deck like protocol is really really strong this format and because everyone's maining infinite hand traps protocol makes it so that your cards resolve uh, so that's why this protocol is really really good I um, mean that's why I chose to play one Manny um, I think with triple faker your grind game is like a lot better because the problem with manifestation you had to play that two before was because you wanted to bring back your multi faker and kept recycling your multi faker and then prime actually really helped with that but because fakers at three you can kind of throw away fakers if that makes sense um and then you play triple spoofing i'm going to say this card is just insane uh triple strike uh triple torrential this card is also like the spice of the deck um torrential is really really insane um i think torrential is just so good because it clears the whole board against the elder synchro deck right and so it doesn't give them any follow-up like when you nibiru them it's kind of like basically that it's basically torrential tribute or like nibiru in the form of a trap card that's why it's really really strong um but when you go nibiru fake i mean uh torrential tribute faker it just like it cleans the whole board and then you have one bounce so even if that the extender you bounce the extender and then you just win the game so torrential is really strong and then the one of io uh it's just like spell cards are really prevalent this this time around and so uh, i think io is like really really strong like it's always been a powerful card not much to say about io I mean, also helps you play around like blow cards like Lightning Storm. So, and then Twin Twister, Cosmic. Um, it like it destroys Guru with it negates their Hidden City. So IO is just like really strong. Then for the side deck, you play the one of Pankertops. Not much to say about this. This card is just insane, going second always. Base out two negates by itself. I uh, triple a pointer. This card is like the nuts. Um, because Faker is at three now, going a pointer Faker is just like crazy. It's kind of like going Minstrel, like Minstrel Dragoons. It's literally Minstrel Dragoons, except you're doing Red Lotus Faker. So it's just crazy. So, uh, Solemn Judgment, you want to slide this card in instead of maining it because uh, it helps you, like, uh, out the, the, um, the, the, essentially, like, the blowout cards of the format. So that's why Solemn Judgment is really, really strong. Summon Limit because against a Rock deck, which is super popular, it just stops their whole turn. It also stops, like, uh, 
um, every other rogue deck as well. Some of them is just like very oppressive, and they just really can't out it because they can't even make Phoenix. Um, and like Summon Limit plus Traps and like Faker and stuff like that is just like insane. Like they just can't out it. Um, and then Cosmic Cyclone is really, really strong. Um, I opted to play this as over Typhoon. Um, if you guys watch uh, the deck profile on my channel, you'll find that uh, I chose not to play Cosmic Cyclone. And that's, I'm sorry, Typhoon because Typhoon only hits up face-up cards. And then um, Cosmic Cyclone is a quick effect um, that can like be reactive during your turn. So that's like, kind of the reason why. The only benefit to Typhoon is that you can use it on the opponent's turn. But there's really not many spells and traps that the opponent really have face up on the opponent's turn anyways. So that's like pretty much it. Uh, the one of Duster, just like more cards out back row decks and to fight against like the control decks. And then the one of Haunter Rock, I think Haunter Rock is like a good side card. I'm still testing this card in the, um, against like the control matchups. Like it can negate final battle, it can negate rage. Um, you know, in the mirror match, it can actually negate the opponent's uh, protocol because it negates the activation before protocol is face up, which means uh, protocol can be negated. Um, but that's like, um, that's like still a card. And you guys already saw the combo with Haunted Rock is really strong. So when you know you're going first, you kind of want to side Haunted Rock in. It also negates evenly match. So that's also another thing to consider. Uh, next thing, uh, you have extra deck. You have double access code. Uh, yeah, guys, this is definitely not a budget list, but you have to play at least two access codes because you're playing extravagance. Honestly, I might bump this card to three. Like, this card is just absolutely insane. Uh, you play Triple Hexia and then Prime Banshee. Uh, not much to say. You cut Prime Banshee down to one now just because Faker's at three and you don't need to link off the Prime Banshee to recur back your Faker. You play Selene because it's so free in, like, the Geist stack. You can bring back any, uh, you know, Spellcaster, which is any Geist monster, and then go to access code soccer and then go Blur. Uh, then you can go Nightmare Phoenix Unicorn for the utility, the Link Cross for, like, that combo. Uh, the double Karibo, uh, the Anima, and then the All Mirage. And that's pretty much it for the deck profile, guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, if this deck is meta relevant again, if this is something that you will watch out for. Uh, and if you do play test this deck, let me know how it goes for you. Like, how, how does it feel? Like, um, because I know, like, a lot of you guys are probably playing Pendulums. Um, and the Pendulums, like I said, one of my, you know, it holds very close to my heart. It's one of the, the second decks I've, I've ever picked up, right? So, like, the top three decks I've ever picked up. Um, Guess was the third deck I've ever picked up uh, ever since I played Yu-Gi-Oh! So, uh, all those decks hold special places in my heart. But I highly encourage you to try out all you guys because it teaches you, like, different mechanics of the game. It teaches you, um, you know, a new way to approach the game, a new way to um, play the game, uh, like, you know, besides playing combo. So, uh, all you guys is definitely one of the ways that I got better um, just because you have to make so many technical plays. And those technical plays really help hone your skills. And, uh, you know, one misstep, one misplay causes you the game. But uh, when you're playing in, like, you know, online tournaments, etc., like, those misplays, um, you know, you learn from them, and then eventually, hopefully, you don't make them again. But anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in into this deck profile and combo tutorial video, um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you guys learned a lot about Altergeist, because, you know, Altergeist ninth best deck. Let's go, baby. All the Altergeist lovers, stand up, because it's definitely the best way to play it. Pac knows this stuff, man. I got a lot of respect for Pac, so make sure you guys go give Pac some love. Subscribe to his channel down below in the first link. Also, subscribe to mine. And if you guys love the Servant of Demon Claws playmat, please, please, boys, get it. Because the more Servant of Demon playmats that are bought, the more videos for your boy. So go pick JC playmat, and maybe we'll go back to videos every day. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Peace.